This is a copy break. It's all about Mylio Drive, what it is and why you should use it. My name is Lori Rubin, and usually An Angela Andrew is the one who hosts these coffee breaks, but she's currently at a trade show today, so I'll be your presenter. We have with us today Michael Deerworth, and he's one of our support specialists, so he'll be in the background answering your questions. I am a product evangelist for Milea Photos. I'm a professional photographer, and I've been in the photography educator space for quite a few years now. I uh, really enjoy showing Milea Photos. A little bit of housekeeping here. If you're watching us live, you are welcome to ask your questions in the chat window and Michael will be answering them. There might be a few questions that he'll take live and uh, we'll save some at the end to answer any questions as well. Okay, Michael, hopefully you are ready to go. All yep, right. ready to go. Perfect. You can watch this replay. We are recording it and I'll show you where you can find this, but it's on our community website under community.mileo.com and under topics, copy breaks, and past copy breaks. So this will be posted within 24 to 48 hours. If you want to review it. I'll also show you where you can find some more information, another video that you can watch, as well as some information on how to install and remove the Milo Drive. Well, this is a uh, Milo Drive. This is new to us, uh, version 24, we came out with this. And it's for anyone that has the Milo Photos Plus account. And what is it? Well, it's an optional benefit with your Milio Photos Plus plan. So it helps you to synchronize and access your library. Each Milio Photos Plus plan has an unlimited storage of optimized images. And you might be asking, well, what are optimized images? These are files that are created from your original digital image and they're perfect for everyday use since they have full raw editing capabilities and metadata. They range from size between 1 10th to 1 15th, the storage space of a standard raw file. And this makes it really easy to fit many more photos on your mobile devices and laptops. Uh, these can be used to create standard five by seven prints, social posts, and more. Uh, this is also a cloud-based encrypted device that automatically stores thumbnails and optimized versions of your images. And it's different from your standard cloud-based services. So let me explain that. Your optimized images are in a optimized image format, which requires your Milio photos to read them and your account needs to be signed in in order to open them. The Milio company does not see your images ever. This makes your images very secure and private. It's an always on device that can provide optimized versions of your images when your other devices are not available. So for example, if you're signing in with a new device or you're traveling, it speeds up the process of keeping your library in sync. So uh, I'll show you how to do this, how to enable it. But basically, um, Milio Drive, again, is 100% optional, but you must enable it. So I'll show you where you can enable it. And to enable your uh, device, you'll be going into settings, sync, and then turning that little setting on. And then a new drive will appear under devices in the drives and clouds section. So I'll show you what my Milio Drive looks like. I'll go ahead and switch over to Milio Photos. Now you can get to that uh, settings by going up to the upper right-hand corner, these little elliptic three little dots here. And if you click on more, then you can get this section here. You wanna click on settings. Under the settings window, you go to sync. And within here, this is where you're gonna turn this on. Now I currently have my Milio Drive already set up, but you would see this little a slider icon here, it'll be turned off. You just need to turn it on so it's blue and then you'll be able to see my Leo drive appear. So I'm gonna close this out and I'll show you where you can find that. You can either go to the dashboard over here on the bottom left-hand corner, or you can go to the upper right-hand corner, a little computer device, but we'll just stay here. I clicked on dashboard. You wanna click on devices and then in your devices, you should see Milio Drive, do you see that there? So I've got some other devices here. I work on my MacBook Pro. I've got a iPhone, which is currently turned off. I could turn it on, you'll see that it would highlight right away. I've got a Google Drive, a couple hard drives as vaults where it keeps all my original files. And then here's my Milio Drive. So that's all you have to do to set it up. It's super easy. <laughs> so um, I don't know, Michael, is there anything else we can add to this? Uh, do you guys have some questions about it? 
Yeah, and in terms of setup, that really is it. It is, yeah. I guess, important to note that it's off by default. So if you downloaded the update and updated on all of your devices, you still won't have Milio Drive unless you specifically go into settings and choose to turn it on. Um, and then once you do, you only have to do that on one device. Milio Drive is added. All of your devices will start syncing with it. Um, but yeah, we, we really made the setup process as easy as possible, hopefully. But Super. please do feel free to ask questions if anyone has questions about that part. Great. Um, what I can do is I can go in and I'll show you where you can find some more information about this. Um, <laughs> there's like a, Michael and I said, there's not a lot to it. We made it super easy, which is great. So, but there's two things I do want to show you here. There's a fundamentals course uh, that's brand new to Mario Photos. I'll show you where you can find that. And there's a section about Mario Drive. Also where you can add, uh, actually look at the manual and there's an add Mario Drive section there. So I'm just gonna go to my browser here and show you where you can find that information. So if you go to Milio.com, this pulls you up to our website. And if you go under the learn tab, the first thing we'll start out with is let's take a look at the product manual. So I'll click on that. And if you haven't used this before, this is a really great reference tool. It's got everything you ever wanted to know about Milio Photos from installation to what the little icons mean. That's really fully, I mean, you can find everything you want to know about Milio Photos in here. So what I usually do is if I'm looking for something specific in this, I would go up to the search and I'll just type in Milio Drive. And then I'll just go ahead and search for that. And I'll take you to some sections that might have Milio Drive in it. We're gonna click on add Milio Drive. So if I click here, you'll see that here's a section. This looks familiar. Uh, remember we were looking at the sync with Milio Drive, that little slider button there that you need to activate some benefits, uh, what is optimized image, enabling and disabling. So if you wanted to remove my little drive, by the way, all you would have to do is just um, click on the unregistered device section. So it's really easy to remove as well. Okay, so uh, besides that, we do have in our community, there is a fundamentals course. So you can find that if you go to our, I'll go back to our website here, so you can see from scratch. There we go. Under learn again, if you go to community, go ahead and pull this up. We have a new course and it's specifically for version 24. So if you click under courses and go to Milio Photos Fundamentals, click on this. Um, I think this takes about five to six hours to go through if you wanted to see all of these videos. I think we've got over 100, 140 videos or so but it really takes you through Milio Photos step-by-step. Step. So if you have some time, or if you want to look at something specific, like in this case, we want to look at the Milio Drive, you just click on Optimize Images and Milio Drive. Rich Harrington takes you through this. It's only about four minutes or so, um, but that might be worth watching as well. I do want to also put a plug into the coffee breaks. Uh, this is Angela's baby. She's the one that usually does these coffee breaks. And uh, if you wanted to see what's up and coming, just click on copy breaks. So you can see we're live here. We'll post this one within 24 to 48 hours. Or again, you can reference those two options, the manual or that video, if you want to learn more about Milo Drive. And if you click on past, you'll see all of our past webinars. You can just click here and then we'll have a link to click to watch the replay. We also have some getting started webinars as well. So another place you might want to go to is under events. You go up up here at the top events and then you'll see all of our upcoming uh, webinars as well as uh, our past webinars as well. Okay, Michael, got any questions yet? Yeah, we have a, a few good questions in the chat that I would be happy to okay. address. So a couple of uh, ones to kind of start out with. Someone asks what the main advantage of using Milo Drive is and kind of the, the practical use. Um, and then Yolanda asked, is Milo Drive part of the one, two, three backup approach? So this is an important point to make. Milo Drive holds the thumbnails and optimized versions of your photos. So as many of you may know, when you import a photo into Milo, um, in addition to that full size original file, Milio will create a very small version called a thumbnail and then a medium sized version called a preview. And then that's when you can go and 
and you know customize your device sync policy. So on your phone, you may just have the thumbnails or the thumbnails and optimized images um, in order to save space because many people have libraries that wouldn't fit on their phone if they stored all of the original images. So you will see that like Lori has a few vaults here um, as external drives. Those are part of the protection mechanism to make sure that every single photo is stored in full size original quality on your vaults. Mylio Drive is something different. Um, like I said, it just has those small and medium versions, the thumbnails and previews. So what it's primarily designed to do is serve as a very easy and convenient way for you to always have access to those thumbnails and previews anywhere you are, or really anywhere that you have an internet connection. The benefit to that is you don't have to have your phone and computer in the same room in order for them to sync with each other necessarily. You can take a bunch of photos with your phone and those previews get uploaded to Mylio Drive. And then later, even if your phone's you know still in your uh, purse, then you can open up Mylio on your computer and all those previews sync down to your computer. So it is an important distinction there. It's, it's for convenience. It's still be able to see and work with your images anywhere with an internet connection, but it is not for backup. Your originals are not on Mylio Drive. You still want to make sure that you have Mylio vaults on your account, and that can be any device, but oftentimes external drives, computers, other cloud services. Um, so we may have more questions come in about that, but if, if anyone has questions about what kind of I just described, please feel free to put those in the chat. Um, so I did mention it is a cloud service. You may have noticed that we have offered other cloud services before. Um, so you can add Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive right now um, as a cloud-based device, and those can be vaults. Um, Mylio Drive is something that we offer as a company, Mylio. It's not on Google or Microsoft. Um, it is on an encrypted server. Only you can view your photos. In order to access them, you have to be signed in to your Mylio account it, uh, on a device um, you know, with the Mylio app. So that's where they are actually stored. It's just on an encrypted server. So let me scroll through and see what new questions we may have. I put a couple of links in there, one to the fundamentals course and one to the manual in case you folks need it. Saw a question just kind of about the instructional materials. Is the content the same across all of the instructional materials? Is the same language used? Um, for the most part, yes. We really try to cover pretty much the same topics and use the same language um, across everything. It's just kind of a matter of how it's presented, whether it's in the manual is, of course, going to be written out and, and have text and pictures, whereas the video course will be actually someone demonstrating it. So um, there may be some differences b between the two, just in terms of uh, if when things have been updated, because we've released a lot of updates and made a lot of changes. But really, most everything should be the same, no matter what you're viewing. Um, how does Mylio Drive determine whether to store a thumbnail or an optimized image? My iPhone sometimes only has thumbnails, and I would like to be able to retrieve the larger optimized version. So Mylio Drive stores all thumbnails and all optimized images. It will have both. Um, whether or not your phone stores the thumbnail or optimized image is going to be determined by the device sync policy for your phone. Um, so you may have it set up so that it only keeps thumbnails. And in that case, it's not going to pull the optimized version from Mylio Drive. There are still ways that you can choose to like download that optimized image on demand if you're just viewing one photo and you only have the thumbnail, but the optimized version is available on Mylio Drive. Um, there's a way to it, tap it and say, download optimized. Um, and I will put that in the chat, I think that's most easily kind of just links to since we have those educational materials. Uh, is Mylio Drive like a cell phone, but always on instead of like a phone where you have to launch Mylio every time the screen goes off, if that makes sense? Kind of, yeah, you, you can think of it like that um, because Mylio on your phone will oftentimes store like just thumbnails and optimized images. 
And so if you were previously using that as kind of like a conduit device or in order to sync those photos from your phone to any other device, um, Milo Drive could kind of take the substitute of that. Instead of opening up Milo on your phone to sync a preview from your phone to computer, um, instead your, your computer just get it straight from Milo Drive without needing to open up an actual app on, on any one device. Uh, does the iPhone sync in the background or does Milo have to be an open window uh, to sync? Milo does have to be open in the foreground in order to sync if you're using it on a phone or tablet. Um, on a computer, you can minimize the window or switch to a different app and you'll continue syncing. Um, but on a phone, the Milio app has to be open in order for that phone to sync with other devices. Uh, Michael, could you describe how a travel vault differs from a normal vault? Good question. So I believe, and this is <laughs> something new that we've introduced in the last few updates, um, I believe you may be referring to a sync policy that is called travel backup. Um, and what that's going to do is keep the full size copies of all of your photos from the last three months. So and it won't keep everything, it'll just keep three months. So that can be helpful if you are traveling and just wanna make sure that your most recent photos are all getting uh, synced to an external drive and, and full size original quality. Um, a regular vault, uh, which is a, another sync policy, and you'll see that it, it just says vault and in parentheses, all files. That is going to keep everything that you've ever imported, every single thing that you see in your MyLayer library, all of those originals are going to be on the vault. Um, so the, yeah, the, the terminology is, is somewhat different. So yeah, travel vault is not really a vault. It's, it's really a travel backup of the last three months of photos. And if you ever want to change that um, on the screen here, this is my iPhone, just showing you as an example. I set it to Space Saver so that it saves optimized images on my phone. And I've got 60,000 images, but yet I can view them on my phone, which is just, it thrills me every time I open up my little photos on my phone. But this is where you can set um, device sync policies. And then you can click on this little drop down, And this is where you can set your space saver or that question that Michael just answered about the travel backup or your vaults. So there's some different options here. Catalog only would be the thumbnails. So that's how you would set that up. So currently with Milo drives, we don't have that option. This is all optimized images. Easy, Laurie, can I ask a question please about that? But, Go sorry, for it. Sorry, it's Darren. <laughs> yes, um, hi. So um, I've recently been uh, rebuilding my my Milio, um, especially after 24, so it's fantastic. Um, I noticed when I imported uh, photos of a drive that was connected to my PC, for example, that would bring in the all the originals, even though I had Space Saver set. Um, why would that be? It just it wants to um, in, import, so it would then increase my drive size. So it bring up, it, it came off the hard drive connected to the PC. And then it would then start to load them locally. Yeah, it could be due to a device sync policy. You, you might have something set where it says keep photos from the last few months. Um, but it's also possible for uh, originals to be stored, for example, on a device that doesn't want to always keep originals. And that could be when you first import them. It could be because you were viewing or editing the photo and Milio synced the original from another device to your computer. And right. then those will be in what's known as the Milio cache, which is just a term that means the device has it, but it doesn't want to permanently keep it. And so there's uh, logic in Milio to where it knows, okay, you okay. have this file, but now it's already synced, it finished syncing to all of your vaults. So now once your computer gets below, you know, X threshold for free space, then we'll just remove the file from your computer. Can I tell you what I did to work around? Um, I had to go in and change it to optimize, even though it was in the space saver, and I, I, I changed it to the optimize view. There's sort of two buttons. It would always swing back. When I did that, I looked at my uh, recycle bin on my PC, and then it started to fill up with thousands of images that it had pulled in. So it, only at that point did it move them to the bin. Um, and then, of course, later, I had to go and optimize as well. I had to... to clear the cache but I found that I don't know if that was a bug maybe I should send that through 
um, to the support team just to explain that. But yeah, it seemed quite strange. Yeah, if you do see it again, then feel free to um, contact support. You can just click help in the menu yes. bar and then contact support and that'll send like a diagnostic report as well. And and we can sort of investigate further, just take a look at the exact settings and see Thank why, you. That, why that might be. Thank, thanks very much. And while I'm here, <laughs> just one more. Um, I tried to import all of my 20 odd thousand photos in uh, Facebook. Um, some of the albums were quite large. When I noticed it did it, it only limited each of the folders or the albums to just 25 images. And I think I heard of this a while ago being an issue, but it seems to happen now. Is there a fix or a workaround from that? I tried to search the community page. I couldn't find anything in there. Yeah, that's a good question. It's actually not one that I've seen before. Um, it will only, that, that Facebook import tool in Mylia will only have access to import the photos that you have actually added. Um, so yeah. for example, it can't, import photos that someone else uploaded and then tag you in or something. So that yeah. may be a limiting factor, but I have not seen like a hard limit of just 25 per album or folder. Okay. It's, it is consistent. Um, some of the albums and of course, being a photographer <laughs> um, and prolific, I've pump, pu pushed in quite a few and, you know, some up to about 60 or 70 and it's, it stops, you know, there might be only four or five in one album, uh, which is fine because that's all there is. But it always cuts off at 25. Anything anything larger than 25, it stops at that. So maybe that's another question again for the support team. Yeah, absolutely. That one I would say, please do reach out and uh, yeah. and we'll investigate that one further. Thank you for letting me hijack this. That's great. Thank you, Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> okay, um, let's back to the yeah, chat. Are there more questions in, in the chat? I think there room? are a few more, yeah. I do see. So Michael said, how long does it take to sync 60,000 files? Do all devices have to be on the first time? That's a great question. And the answer is, it depends. <laughs> um, it, it is just going to depend on, on too many factors to really give you an actual number. Um, if you have 60,000 photos versus all 60,000 videos, of course, it's going to be, be different or raw files. So it's going to depend on the actual size of the files themselves. Um, how your devices are connected, syncing between a computer and external drive is going to be a lot quicker than syncing um, you know, over, over the internet. So the best way to do it is if you're first getting set up, it is helpful to just open up Milo on all devices, you know, connect external hard drives and just let things run. Um, you don't have to keep all of your devices on at all times if you need to close Milo on your phone and, you know, it, take it to a different location. That's fine. When you open it back up, it'll pick up where it left off. Uh, how do you retrieve photos off a vault or travel vault versus Mylio vault? Um, so all of those are really this, the same thing, uh, it, essentially. A vault is a sync policy in Mylio that you can assign to any device that has enough space to store all of your photos in full size original quality. And if it's an external drive, then it just needs to be connected to a computer running Mylio. If it's a device with an actual screen, like a computer or tablet or phone, then you just need to open up the Mylio app and any originals that it has that another device needs um, will automatically sync over. Uh, Gloria said, why does the Space Saver preset for the iPhone show image policies as original instead of optimized? Good question. Um, so these are actually the preset up top, the uh, Space Saver, that is actually what's going to be stored on your phone. So th that description underneath, keep only compressed copies. Now underneath originals and optimized, those are where you can make additional changes. So right now, um, you can see it says documents less than five megabytes. So if you want to make sure that there are some originals that are always stored on your phone, even though it's set to space saver, that's where you would add those here. So right now, any documents that are less than five megabytes in size, uh, the phone will store all of those originals and same with the optimized versions. If you wanna make sure that the optimized version is always available, um, then you can add criteria here as well with quick collections. So that could be all photos tagged with a certain category or you know a, a, anything of that sort. Uh, what happens when photos are imported from a device and then later that device is unregistered? Good question. Yeah, as long as those photos have finished syncing to a vault, then 
nothing really happens. Um, those photos stay in your Miley library. You still have all the originals on your vault. They aren't deleted or removed. Um, if you import a bunch of photos on your phone and then immediately unregister the phone before those photos sync somewhere else, then you would no longer have access to those. So you just want to make sure your devices are finished syncing before you unregister anything. Yeah, and the next one, George is asking to go through the various sync settings again, which I'd be happy to do so. I put a link to the manual and it actually has a really nice description of all of these different uh, preset policies for the sync policies. But just really quickly uh, as an overview, this catalog is basically your thumbnails with metadata. The highest rating would be your four to five stars and your picked flags. Uh, photos only would not include any of your videos or documents. Uh, Space Saver is optimized images. Uh, this is great for phones, for example, where you don't have a lot of space. And Travel Backup is saving uh, your last three months worth of media. And then Vault holds all of your original files. Uh, as you can see over on the left here, I've got three vaults set up. See where it says Vault? So I can see immediately these are the ones that have all of my originals. And uh, we always do recommend two to three backups uh, just to keep your memory safe and secure, just in case anything should happen. Oh boy, a long one from Jane. <laughs> yes, I was just reading through it, um, having to do a good question about deleting photos. And if you delete it in one location, where does it get deleted from uh, elsewhere? I just want to make sure I read. If I delete image one, two, three in Mylio, and it's deleted on my iPhone in Mylio. Is it deleted in my iPhone photos account? And then what about Google Photos? Good question. So there is some nuance here, but generally, if you delete a photo in Mylio, it's deleted on every device. Um, so if I if you import a photo in a Mylio on your phone, it syncs to your computer, it syncs to your external drives, it syncs to Mylio Drive, and then in Mylio on any device, you select that photo and hit delete, it gets deleted everywhere. And that's both inside of Mylio and outside of Mylio. So you'll see it disappear from Mylio. And then if you're like on your external drive looking at where that file was stored in your vault, then you'll see it get deleted from there. The exceptions to that are with Apple Photos or Google Photos slash just a, an Android phone's media library, which, which can be called different things. That generally is a one-way sync. Mylio does have the ability to import photos from Apple Photos. If you delete something in Mylio, it's not going to get deleted from Apple Photos. Uh, that's, that's kind of the exception to that. And then the same thing with the equivalent on Android. If you have Mylio set up to automatically import new photos that you take with your Android phone, then deleting that photo in Mylio is not going to delete it from that phone's camera roll or, or gallery app, whatever it may be called, uh, on your particular device. Um, so that, that's the exception, though. But generally, you want to think of Mylio as a syncing service where any change you make on one device gets made on all your devices, and that includes deleting photos. It's like one more from Jason. Yeah, so Jason um, talked about, it seems if you delete a folder or file outside of Mylio, example, in File Explorer, Mylio gives errors that the source is not available or can figure out how to remove it. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind here as well with, with nuances. So by default, there's a setting that's turned on called safe delete. Um, and what that does is it specifically affects the behavior of what happens when you delete something outside of Mylio. If safe delete is on and you go into File Explorer and delete something on your computer or external drive, Mylio will not remove that file. Instead, it will think that that was an accident and it will try to sync that original from another device. Um, it may or may not be on another device, but it, but it will it will try to retrieve that original somewhere else if you deleted it on your computer or external drive. Um, so you can turn that off if you want to be able to delete photos in File Explorer and have those deleted in Mylio and that deletion sync to your other devices. Then you would just go uh, here on the dashboard and then under devices, you could select your computer. Um, and this does need to be on the device that you're using. Um, so just select your device from the top of the list. And then there's a, there's a setting that says safe delete 
um, on that on that next screen. So we see right there, just right at the bottom. And if that's off, then it will function the same way as if you delete a photo in Mylio. If it, Mylio will see that you deleted something on your computer or external drive and it gets deleted everywhere. And then you also mentioned like errors that the source is no longer available. Even if safe delete is off, you also want to make sure that you're always working within the folders that Mylio is linked to. Um, so if you have a Mylio pictures folder, you wanna make sure that you're making changes within the Mylio pictures folder and not that you're deleting the Mylio pictures folder or renaming that or moving that because um, Mylio is linked there and it's saying, okay, I'm looking for the Mylio pictures folder in this spot and I'm going to monitor all the changes that are made inside of it. Uh, so you just wanna make sure you're working inside of those linked folders. Um, when using dedupe, it sometimes chooses to delete the better of the two duplicates. Why is that? Um, you may, if you could provide a little more information maybe about maybe what you mean about the better of the two duplicates. Um, the way Mylio's dedupe tool works is that it's only going to find exact files, which um, <laughs> for better or worse, it's only going to show you photos that are exact duplicates. So the exact same file size, um, the same file type. If one of them was cropped or edited outside of Mylio, it's not going to be considered a duplicate, even down to the metadata that's embedded in the file. If one of them has uh, GPS coordinates and the other does not, then they won't be considered duplicates. Now, if you imported two of the exact same file and then you made changes in Mylio, like you, tagged faces or you added geotags, um, it will still be able to identify that those are duplicates. And then when you actually delete them, there's an option that's checked on by default that says merge metadata. So that way it, you're not going to lose any information if you added a bunch of face tags on one and added a bunch of categories on the other, you can merge all of that. Uh, it's saving blurry photos or distorted pixelation. Yeah, in that case, they, they would both have to be the, the same. So it may be an issue just with how they're being displayed. Um, I, I'm not sure. I would say that if it's something you're seeing consistently and have questions about, then definitely reach out to support and we can give you a more specific answer on exactly what you're seeing and why. Uh, do you have any other questions? Michael, you're doing a great job answering. <laughs> I appreciate Thanks. it. I, I, unless I missed something, I think that... Um, those were all that I'd seen come in. I, I know just saw a new one pop up from Jane uh, about dedupe. Uh, when it displayed two identical images, I saw a long file name with lots of numbers. How do I figure out where the photo came from? Oh, good question. There's actually a way, um, if you select the photo in Mylio, then on the right-hand side in the info panel, it'll display a bunch of information about it. Um, so that includes the file name, camera it was taken with, et cetera. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a section that says source. Um, and that can give you some more information about where it came from, just in terms of when and where it was imported and what folder it's in. Um, especially if you're seeing a lot of duplicates that it, you don't know why they're there, um, that can give you a better idea. Maybe they're all imported at the same time or all in the same folder and give you some more information. All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this up. I hope that you folks, if you haven't used Mylio Drive yet, if you have the Mylio Photos Plus account, you might as well take advantage of it. Uh, it's a really nice feature. And uh, again, if you have any questions, um, you can always reach out to support as well. And uh, join us again for another coffee break or getting started. We'd love to see you again. I see some familiar faces, so hope to see you. All right. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Michael, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day.